Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Badminton Unlimited. Coming up on today's show, we sit down with 2004 Olympic champion Taufik Hidayat and relive the glory years. So after the Olympic, ada World Champ di situ karena saya merasa belum complete. Plus, how many rackets does a badminton player go through in a tournament? The fun facts coming up. And we recap the best rallies from the Yonex Sunrise Dr. Akhilesh Dasgupta India Open 2018. As promised, the HSBC BWF World Tour started with a bang, with four back-to-back -back tournaments being played in Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, Jakarta and New Delhi. The top players were eager to make their mark and start collecting points to get their HSBC Race to Guangzhou campaign started. Here's a roundup of all the headline makers. Starting with men's singles, which saw four different winners. Indonesian veteran Tommy Sugiato successfully defended his Princess Sirawanawari Thailand Masters title to kickstart his season. World number one, Victor Axelsen, carried over his winning momentum from 2017 into the new year, capturing the Peridua Malaysia Masters title. Unfortunately, an ankle injury forced the Dane to retire from the Daihatsu Indonesia Masters, paving the way for local star Anthony Ginting to win his first HSBC BWF World Tour men's singles title. There was also joy for Xie Yuqi as he clinched the Yonex Sunrise Dr. Akhilesh Dasgupta India Open crown after a barren 2017. The HSBC Race to Guangzhou rankings determines who qualifies for the year-end HSBC BWF World Tour Finals. Chinese Taipei's Chou Tian Chen tops the rankings, having played in three tournaments with a runners-up finish in India. Title winners Ginting and Sugiato from Indonesia are separated by Malaysia's Liu Daren, with Axelsen not far behind. In women's singles, there was an almighty clash between world number one, Tai Tzu Ying, and fifth seed Rachanok Intanon at the Perajua Malaysia Masters. The final, which lasted 65 minutes, saw the Thai superstar emerging victorious after twice being a point away from defeat. It didn't take long for Tai to rebound from that disappointing loss. A week later, in Jakarta, she was celebrating a title victory at the Daihatsu Indonesia Masters. But the biggest story came out of New Delhi seven days later, when American Pai Wen Zhang broke the hearts of local fans by upsetting the defending champion and overwhelming favorite, Kusala V. Sindhu, for her first title at the top level. I'm really happy. Also, like, uh, before I played PBR, I didn't win any match. So this time, I win it all back. A triumph in Malaysia, plus two semi-final finishes, have propelled Intanon to the top of the HSBC race to Guangzhou standings. Tai is currently second, thanks to two final appearances with a win in Indonesia. Carolina Marin's two quarterfinals and semi-final finishes see the Spaniard in third. Over to the women's doubles, Malaysia proved to be a happy hunting ground for Christina Pedersen and Camilla ritter -Yul. The Danish duo were elated as they broke their four-match losing streak to the world number ones, Chen 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 and Jie Yu Fan. But their Daihatsu Indonesia Masters campaign was brought to an end in the semi-finals by eventual champions Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi. The Japanese clinched their first title in over four months after they held off home pair Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu in 48 minutes. However, the Indonesian duo's tenacity paid off the following week in India as they were rewarded with their first title of the year. Denmark's Ritter Yul and Pedersen lead the HSBC Race to Guangzhou rankings, having gone deep into the three tournaments in which they competed. Thai duo John Kolpan Kizitarakul and Rawinda Prajong Jai are hot on their heels, with a title win in Bangkok and a runners-up finish in India. Polly and Rahayu round out the top three. New year, new beginnings, but still there was no stopping Red Hot Men's doubles pairing of Kevin Sanjaya Sukumuljo and Marcus Fernaldi Gideon. The Indonesians captured two titles in the two tournaments in which they competed, Indonesia and India. Compatriots Mohamed Rian Ardianto and Fajar Alfian too joined the winner's circle, 
The 21-year-olds came back from a game and 13-18 down to defeat local favourites Govi Shen and Tan Wee Kiong at the Perdue Malaysia Masters. No surprises that Gideon and Sukumuljo lead the HSBC race to Guangzhou standings with two tournament wins. Malaysia's Govi Shem and Tan Wee Kiong are in second, having played in three of the four events. While their conquerors in Malaysia, Ardianto and Alfian follow closely behind in third. In mixed doubles, Jin Si Wei and Wang Ya Chiong's three tournament win streak came to an abrupt end at the Peridua Malaysia Masters, where they were beaten by Hong Kong's Tan Chun Man and Set Ying Suet. The Chinese pair, who only got together in November last year, quickly regained their footing by defeating the world and Olympic champions Dontawi Ahmad and Liliana Natsia on the latter's home court in Jakarta. While over in India, Denmark's Matthias Christensen and Christina Pedersen secured their first HSBC BWF World Tour title. It gives us confidence, uh, of course, the other pairings uh, in the world can see that uh, we won this title, so uh, yeah, I hope they fear us a little bit. But it's Malaysia's Go Soon Huat and Chevron Jamie Lai's two semi-final finishes that see them on top of the HSBC race to Guangzhou standings. Newly formed Indonesian pair Praveen Jordan and Malati diver Octavianti's runners-up finish in India propels them to second. With Jakarta winners Zheng and Huang in third and India champions Christensen and Pedersen in fourth. Here are the tournaments coming up. The next two competitions take place in Europe. The Yonex Swiss Open will be held from the 20th to the 25th of February, with the Yonex German Open being played the week prior to the first Super 1000 event of the year in Birmingham. The Yonex All England Open will take place from the 14th to the 18th of March. No one can refute Indonesia's standing as one of the protagonists in badminton history. Southeast Asia's biggest nation has contributed seven Olympic champions to date, and one of which came from one of its finest talents in the men's singles field, Taufik Hidayat. Ia enggak enggak gampang ya untuk menjadi di level, apalagi untuk juara, karena untuk ikut Olimpik aja orang pasti oh ini Olimpian. Tapi untuk juara sesuatu yang eh, apa namanya dicita-cita semua lah atlet di seluruh dunia dan nggak gampang juga untuk mencapai situ banyak yang eh, apa namanya eh, hambatan-hambatan ya. Pertama saya ikut Olimpik itu tahun 2000, 2004 baru bisa untuk eh, jadi yang terbaik. 2008, 2018, 12 saya masih ikut juga jadi saya ikut eh, Olimpik itu empat tahun dan eh, saya rasa semua atlet semua player lah mau jadi yang terbaik di Olimpik itu karena kita boleh juara yang lain tapi satu kali juara Olimpik orang semua akan akan ingat lah itu. Dulu saya main main bola lagi saya kecil, so papa saya untuk ajar saya untuk main bulu tangkis, but di Indonesia the only one only badminton can growing up not football. Itu ada orang tua saya ada ada dia punya teman untuk the, dikenalin sama pelatihnya namanya Sumirat di sana. Ya waktu umur 9 tahun saya masuk di uh, klub SGS. Di Indonesia ada national tournament benda like 11 tahun ke bawah, 13 tahun, 15, 15 tahun ke bawah dan ada junior. Di situ kita ada seleksi untuk nasional. Dulu saya umur 15 masuk di national team. Leaps up into the shot. That means all his body weight is helping with the power of the smash. Dulu se uh, ya se sempat ada 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 sedikit masalah juga dengan dengan national team. Dulu karena dulu uh, sebelum 2004 pelatih saya sempat move to Singapore. So, uh, saya hanya cita-cita, saya, saya juga pernah ikut ke Singapura tiga bulan, dan saya balik lagi untuk Jakarta satu tahun sebelum, satu tahun setengah lah untuk sebelum Olimpik. Pelatih saya tanya, apa kamu mau juara? 
untuk uh, Olimpi kali ini apa enggak dan mau ikutin program uh, trainingnya dan saya punya uh, punya mimpi yang sangat tinggi lah untuk masuk ke Olimpik aja saya mesti kualifikasi yang hampir nggak bisa ikut juga untuk Olimpik dan saya punya cita-cita di situ yang untuk pas begitu main di Olimpik untuk jadi yang terbaik now or never so I think is uh, di situ saya untuk yang sebisa mungkin kerja keras saya untuk berusaha menjadi yang terbaik dan bersyukur saya bisa yang jadi nomor satu di Olimpik Aten 2004. Saya melihat senior saya, mungkin yang lain mereka punya semua gelar lah untuk SEA Games, Asian Games, Olympic World Champ. So after the Olympic ada World Champ di situ karena saya merasa belum komplit. So saya ada satu target untuk kejar uh, Olympic next next year 2000, 2005. Ya yeah. di situ saya juga untuk uh, memang Olympic level tertinggi, tapi saya ini belum pernah. Jadi saya harus meraih biar uh, semua untuk multi event untuk negara bisa memberikan yang terbaik bisa komplit semua karena dari SEA Games, Asian Games, Olympic World Champ, Asia for the country already done. Saya bisa main di rumah sendiri, so all family, all my friend can watch the game. Dan semua masyarakat Indonesia bisa nonton di situ, bisa memberikan yang terbaik. Semua orang bisa support sebagai tuan rumah. Tapi di situ kadang juga kalau kita nggak kuat ada beban untuk eh, apa namanya untuk ada pressure untuk harus menang. Karena orang Indonesia macam eh, kalau menang mereka support, kadang kalau kalah mereka yang ya positif negatif lah. Tapi dari situ buat saya jadi 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 motivasi ya. Apalagi mungkin sekarang untuk yang junior player, untuk Indonesian player yang sekarang, Indonesia one the biggest prize money. So dulu mungkin masih kecil pas zaman saya, tapi semua. Dan mungkin juga kalau lihat kita audience, the supporter apa semua, hanya di Indonesia yang bisa yang crowd, yang berisik, yang louder. Semua di negara lain, apalagi di Eropa kan yang only cheering, gak ada yang bah 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 bah. Itu satu motivasi buat saya. Kadang kalau lihat itu, I miss that. Men singles champion from Malaysia, Lee Chong Wei. Kadang, kadang melihat ya, Lee Chong Wei, Lindan masih main. Memang uh, Lindan, Lee Chong Wei younger than me, uh, tapi dia masih masih bagus lah, masih hebat dia masih main. Mungkin untuk Lee Chong Wei kan dia masih banyak motiva, motivasi untuk main, untuk meraih sesuatu yang besar tapi dia salah satu uh, pemain terbaik, terhebat juga di dunia bulu tangkis kalau Lindan yang mungkin more than uh, crazy dia already get all, I mean the, from the smaller, the bigger Olympic two time, Asian game, Thomas Cup, everything tapi dia masih main, is nggak uh, gampang untuk bisa dia stabil di atas Welcome back. We continue our special feature on one of the biggest badminton stars of the past, Taufik Hidayat. Earlier in the show, the Indonesian legend spoke at length about the biggest moments of his illustrious career, and one of his trademark shots that helped him achieve so much was that fantastic backhand smash. He's known to hold the record for the fastest backhand smash at 260 kilometers per hour. And according to Taufik, It's one of the hardest strokes to learn. Itu nggak tahu ya. The guy give me is like a special. Kita nggak bisa ajarin mereka juga karena itu kalau mau belajar mesti dari uh, apa namanya masih de, dari anak-anak lah. Kalau untuk mereka udah seperti itu mereka sedikit lebih lebih susah lah untuk untuk belajar itu karena mereka udah punya karakter dan mungkin cara pegang raketnya juga mereka udah punya karakter sendiri. So it's no easy. You know.
saya nggak nggak tahu ya itu hanya orang aja yang wah backhand smash gitu. tapi saya berterima kasih mereka dan saya juga punya sesuatu punya pukulan yang memang nggak semua orang punya so kalau memang untuk uh, apa namanya untuk jadi seorang juara harus menciptakan sesuatu yang beda dari yang lain juga biar semua orang juga mengingat ini orang kelebihannya apa ini dan di Chongwe Peter Gate saya punya karakter punya kelebihan dalam pukulan apa 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 aja. Dan itu harus diciptakan dengan image dari kita juga kita juga dengan mungkin dengan adanya media ke masyarakat juga jadi tahu kita harus bisa menciptakan seperti itu. So, we've heard him talk about his career and his game, but what happens once the curtain falls? In our exclusive interview with one of badminton's greatest heroes, Taufik Hidayat tells us how he's enjoying retirement. Itu sangat sangat berat saya untuk mengumumkan saya retired. So, retired saya 2013, tapi saya udah memang udah prepare sangat sedih ya buat buat saya karena selama ini dari kecil yang bisa Saya berdiri seperti ini, apa yang saya bisa berikan yang terbaik buat bangsa, buat keluarga, buat teman, buat masyarakat Indonesia dari debulu tangkis. Dan e, saya harus mengakhiri itu. Tapi suatu saat buat atlet memang ada waktunya untuk e, retired. So saya memang prepare jauh-jauh jadi nggak yang sekarang saya pertandingan menang or kalah besok saya retired nggak. Memang sudah ada plan untuk untuk itu. Dan after retired saya punya plan saya mesti ngapain. Sekarang, after retired, saya hanya uh, masih bisa main untuk untuk football. Ya. Dulu kalau masih main badminton, saya nggak ada main football karena takut yang injured apa untuk untuk itu. So, memang uh, saya fanatik lah untuk uh, untuk football. Mungkin dulu saya lebih prepare. Uh, Saya badminton, saya punya negara, saya punya masyarakat, dan saya bukan punya yang namanya wife, bukan punya uh, pacar, mungkin bukan punya orang tua, tapi badminton is the nomor satu lah. Jadi kalau yang lain nggak bisa, jadi harus badminton dulu. Kalau sekarang ya nomor satu saya buat saya keluarga, karena badminton semua udah selesai, dan uh, gimana cara saya bisa membesarkan anak saya dua untuk yang terbaik nantinya dan saya harus menjaga itu karena anak saya yang perempuan dia latihan muay thai mungkin ada cooking mungkin ada yang lain terus untuk anak saya yang laki-laki uh, dia play soccer dia play now is play, play drum so buat saya sport apa aja dia yang penting dia olahraga itu is uh, is good for her dan uh, mungkin yang Saya tegaskan, saya ingin mereka yang study lebih tinggi lagi lah, yang prioritas. Ya cita-cita saya semua dari atlet saya sudah semua. Sekarang gimana saya bisa memberikan yang terbaik untuk keluarga, mungkin untuk uh, negara di samping lain juga. A racket is a badminton player's best friend. We always see players carrying huge bags at tournaments. Have you, though, ever wondered how many rackets they have inside and how many new ones they go through in a year? We have the answers for you. I use quite a lot of rackets during a year. I don't really know how many. Sometimes Christina is too uh, too near me at on court and then, then a racket will break uh, sometimes at practice and also during matches. Good for us, uh, Jonix uh, delivers some really good rackets. So, um, yeah, so how many uh, I can't tell you, but uh, when I go to a tournament, I always bring uh, eight or nine records. I think it's about 10 years ago, I'm ready to go. I usually take six years ago, because I'm ready to go to the tournament, so I'm ready to go to the tournament. 30 or something, I think. Sometimes it can break, also during our matches when calling uh, hits a bad smash or <laughs> hits me, it can break, so I think around 30. I have a big smash so sometimes as today when, when uh, a string goes, the racket goes, so, so maybe 40 or 50 rackets. Very high tension but also a, a lot of pace, so when you hit it not so clean, <laughs> it goes. 
Wow, I don't know exactly how many racket I use. I don't know, maybe uh, eight, nine, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, it's hard to say a lot, too many. <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, we also change the times, but I can't put a number on it. It's, it's quite a lot. I usually always carry 10 to 12 rackets uh, with me at tournaments. I think I don't have a lot of rackets. 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 And there it is. She's done it. When I won, I always told the racket to the fans. So I think that they also prepare for me uh, enough. It's about just rows and rackets. It's about one year, only 10 rackets because I, champ I champion just one or two now only. <laughs>The players certainly went through numerous rackets at the Yonex Sunrise Dr. Akhilesh Das Gupta India Open 2018, with some of the longest and best rallies played at Siri Fort. Here are our top five rallies from the tournament. Smash. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And again, and again. Ah, oh, misses. Brilliant. Oh, no, this she and she kept it coming back. Brilliant running. Brilliant. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Well played. She you she. you win a rally. Great defence. Oh my goodness. He's refusing to give up. What a rally. Four dives so far in this rally. Five dives. Oh, this is just extraordinary. Oh! Won't you believe it? That's it for now. But join us again next week as we speak to India's top female shuttler, Kusala Venkata Sindhu and look ahead to the first tournament of the European leg of the HSBC BWF World Tour, the Yonex Swiss Open. 
In the meantime, remember, you can log on to BWFWorldTour.com for all the latest news on the HSBC BWF World Tour.